Content routing is an incredibly complex problem. Uh, you've heard about the DHT a little bit earlier and some of the optimizations that we're working on there from Guy. Uh, and also you've heard about this uh, IPNI solution that uh, you couldn't be blamed for recognizing our extremely disparate approaches to kind of solving this problem that doesn't exist in traditional location-based networks. And so uh, I'd like to refer to this quote from Richard Feynman from an interview that he did, uh, basically the idea being, uh, there's such a lot in the world, there's so much distance between the fundamental rules of everything that uh, the final phenomenon that results is actually uh, just astoundingly hard to connect to the simple operations that actually uh, result in that end outcome. And content routing is very much like that. We have a very, very complex set of networks with uh, the need to look up these uh, content identifiers. And the way that we do that seems very complicated because there are so many ways to look at it. But truly, it's actually a very, very simple operation that's just happening at a very large scale. And so what is the IPFS Content Routing Workgroup? Um, we're kind of a dialogue-driven focal point for discussing these problems and uh, looking at both simultaneously the immediate execution of all of these things that we've talked about today, um, getting these uh, out into potentially Kubo or uh, addressing uh, like uh, content routing discussions for like DHT optimizations, delegated content routing API design, uh, all of these immediate executions that are ongoing. Uh, and then simultaneously, we're addressing this future problem of how do we get to this federated network of uh, indexer nodes, um, interplanetary network indexer nodes, which uh, results in a decentralized solution to what is a highly centralized uh, immediate kind of result that we're working on. So we're the place to talk about these things. Uh, who makes up this content routing worker presently? Uh, so I've kind of got a, a group of folks here that are consistent contributors to it. Uh, it's the IPNI team, the IPFS stewards, uh, Probe Lab, and the Bifrost team, who does a lot of testing support for us, but also who uh, enables us to actually roll a lot of these changes out or test them in uh, the Kubo nodes or uh, their clusters. And then uh, we occasionally have guests that visit from IRO, uh, the general public, or uh, just generally like independent contributors that are interested from uh, the IPFS side of the house. Uh, but ultimately, these meetings are actually open to the public. They're all recorded on YouTube. So if you'd like to go back through historical ones and kind of see the things that we've discussed or understand like a little bit of context and how we approach these problems, you can go back and like recreate all those discussions as well as uh, all of our notes which are shared publicly on Notion. So uh, why should you care? And what is the current state of content routing today as we discuss it? I think Mossy's already really covered a lot of that in his earlier talk, but I'll just kind of recapture that just for context here. Um, we've got the DHT, which uh, is old reliable. It's chugging along, and you can count on it to persistently be there and do what it's intended to do. We can always rely on it. This is one content routing system uh, that provides a peer to peer functionality. The Hydra boosters still exist presently. Uh, they're operating as a bridging function right now, so they're passing content. Uh, and then you've got the interplanetary network indexer which exists as a standalone instance, sid.contact, which you can refer to. Uh, but additionally, there are uh, actually seven of these instances running globally. I'll show you a map in a little bit, which highlights where those actually physically are right now, uh, that you could theoretically refer to to um, be performing lookups. Uh, so they are available. Um, I look forward for the SID.contact instance of the Interplanetary Network Indexer. Uh, we're presently working immediately on our double hash value store. So 
We're going to get an in-depth look at that with uh, Yvonne's talk a little bit later today. Something we're really excited about, this presents a use case for privacy that uh, we'll actually be able to uh, obscure a bit uh, what exactly people are doing on our network. We don't want that to be like necessarily externally visible. We want people to have the option to choose um, whether or not they you know, want their traffic you know, essentially monitored. Um, and um, we've got some monitoring of uh, index operator instances. So I mentioned these uh, six other instances that are publicly available. Right now, they're all going through the process independently of synchronizing the ad chain that we use to provide lookups at SID.contact. So all of these indexer instances are currently at varying states of the ingestion process. Some of them are very close behind us, and some of them are further away. But I wouldn't blame any of you for not knowing like, what the state of any of those is, because we're not advertising that to the broader community. You can't see what the state of synchronization is across these instances. And so a next big step for us as we approach this longer term goal of having a, a federated distributed mesh of network indexers that you could refer to for lookups is to understand exactly what the state of all these are. Uh, and then only then could we actually approach solving these problems of uh, waiting or uh, reliability or uh, what the different uh, responses are that you might get from one of these. And then additionally, we're working on this um, edge node service. Uh, Masi mentioned the caching problem. The idea that the closer we can get uh, a reflection of uh, this, this index, this key value store that we present for you to be able to perform lookups, the faster those lookups might be. And so um, we have the uh, Saturn network, the CDN is uh, really broad, it's a deep network, and we have the opportunity to deploy an edge node service to that network uh, and take advantage of the fact that we have this like, highly distributed network to get lookups as close as possible to reduce network traffic um, across this entire network. And then so what does this look like that's the IPNI uh, in relation to this broader, more disparate problem of content routing. Um, content routing uh, crosses several teams. And so uh, we've got, I mentioned ProBlab, Bifrost, uh, the APFS stewards. But really, the, the problems that we're solving actually affect almost everybody. Uh, everybody that's using the network is impacted by the decisions that are being made during these discussions of the content routing process. So um, some of the closer term stuff, I think Guy mentioned he's working on this DHT refactoring. Uh, maybe a broader way to look at that is uh, optimizations of the DHT, because you also heard uh, Masi kind of discuss a little bit of optimizing the speed and the efficiency with which the IPNI can leverage the DHT. There's a broader conclusion there that if we take all of these sources and we're able to optimize them, that ultimately we can uh, leverage the DHT even better than uh, the way that we do now. Um, there's also uh, the concept of delegated content routing puts. So another thing you might have heard Masi mention was that uh, we've highly optimized this, um, this pathway for um, ingestion. But Ultimately, we really want to get to the point where we can delegate the function of putting information uh, into this system. Um, and so uh, that's work associated with that that we would like to address as a group. Um, and then there's um, BitSwap provider search delays and peer routing optimization. There are other opportunities uh, that have nothing necessarily immediately to do with the IPNI, but ultimately result in a better content routing experience across the network. Um, these are the types of discussions that you're going to find happening in this content routing work group. And then ultimately, kind of at the tail end of this, like the direction that we're really going as a group uh, with all of these teams is that we want ambient discovery of these indexer instances so that we have this federated network of indexers that uh, exists to serve the purpose of the whole network so that you always consistently have a place to uh, very speedily and efficiently uh, look up information anywhere on the network. So what does it look like right now? 
these are actually the instances of the IPNI that are running. Uh, they're all in different states, as I mentioned. So uh, we have a very heavy presence here in North America. Probably uh, it's good, but uh, really ultimately what we want is we want this map to be broken down into zones that uh, service the lookup frequency. And so uh, we will be making a very intentional push to find folks that are interested in operating an indexer instance in South America, Africa, the Middle East, uh, Europe, so that we have more representation closer to where the lookups happen, um, as well as uh, we have uh, both Australia, which we recently added. We're very excited about that. Uh, they're actually pretty close to ingesting the ad chain. Uh, and then uh, our friends in China here. Um, so what kind of discussions can you expect to find in the content routing work group in the future? This is my pitch to you to actually potentially join this work group, uh, listen in, contribute your ideas. Uh, I think the elephant in the room that I would like point out is that um, when you take the decentralized nature of the DHT uh, and this concept of pure routing, uh, when you look at something like the Interplanetary Network Indexer, the, the immediate conclusion that you're likely to come to is that one of these is a highly centralized lookup solution in relation to a highly decentralized, kind of independently operated solution. And so we have a goal of, of trying to get this now very fast, very highly scalable solution uh, to be decentralized and to take those values that were used in the implementation of the DHT uh, and spread them out into this solution that uh, is highly adaptable and uh, extensible and can be um, you know, potentially evolved into even further content routing methods in the future that we haven't even imagined yet. Um, so there are a few things that in the immediate future will contribute towards that discussion. Uh, we've got index operator discussions and feedback. So we have all these folks running uh, IPNI instances right now. We need to uh, build those relationships in a way where we're able to start handling traffic with them, that we figure out what our incentive solutions are going to be to uh, justify them running these instances. Uh, I'm sure everybody's doing everything out of the kindness of their own heart, but ultimately there's some traffic involved with this and uh, the good of the network alone may not drive these behaviors as much as we might like it to. Uh, so there are some incentive solutions that need to be discussed, designed, and worked out and uh, how we ultimately achieve this. Uh, Juan did a talk last year at IPFS thing. Highly recommend looking at where he discussed potentially like L2 or L1 uh, solutions to this type of problem. But uh, we're at a point in time where we're basically setting the stage uh, for that design discussion to result in an actually distributed mesh network. Uh, of these instances. Uh, and then uh, we've got Rhea and Lassie ultimately as a, kind of a potential staging ground uh, for a lot of the work that we're doing. So we now have this super powerful tool available to us to uh, try things out. And so uh, when the group's meeting, we're, we're kind of talking about these things that we can potentially do. Uh, and then uh, I, I kind of put down these client agnostic interfaces, but I think Guy brought a really important solution to the group recently to talk about looking at our interfaces and how we uh, deal with like reprovide, for instance. Uh, there's a lot of discussion that's going to be happening, I think, around that uh, in the near term future. And then um, I just want to say again, I'm, uh, this is a sales pitch. Uh, we really want to encourage your participation in this group, uh, at least in the Slack. Uh, but if you join the calls, we'd be happy to have you there as well. Uh, I put some links in this presentation to share with you. There's a Luma that has uh, all the future discussions that are coming up. Uh, here in about two weeks will be the next one. Uh, there's a YouTube channel with our playlist, which includes all of the historic discussions that you're welcome to join. Uh, and then additionally, uh, the notion for the content routing work group has an aggregation of all the information, decisions we're making, discussions we're having on this topic. Uh, you're welcome to go look around in there. And then ultimately, uh, if you join our Slack IPFS content routing work group or message me directly, uh, I would absolutely be happy to talk to you about any of the stuff that we're working on um, and future solutions for this whole problem. Can you like, walk through the process.
process of how like a deal or a SID gets advertised on the network. And I know you were calling for people to be running these in indexer nodes uh, to cash like uh, cash these associations between uh, SIDs and where they exist on the network. Um, are there frameworks in place that I can't, I don't have to cache the entirety of the network or I can just cache the SIDs that I'm interested in from maybe like a certain like a certain like agent or deal maker or from a certain provider? It's a pretty good question. So uh, if you think about the way the way a SID ends up in the key value store on the network indexer, you have to right now uh, run a provider instance. And that provider instance usually is happening in the case of Boost or um, it, it's happening on uh, the networks in, in Filecoin um, as part of the deal making process. That SID gets announced as an advertisement to the network indexer. And so there's actually some metadata associated with it beyond just the key value pair of uh, the SID and the provider ID, but uh, that's what we represent the end result to be able to perform lookups. Um, the idea of delegating puts is a content routing. Um, that's the idea of creating like um, an API that's an interface that potentially you could uh, perform these advertisements through like an HTTP payload, for instance. And so um, that's part of the process that we're working towards is how do we disaggregate uh, these solutions that we have to get your content onto the network indexer. And so um, in the future, it should be much easier to do. Um, another work stream that we're approaching right now is uh, and <laughs> we need a lot of help from our partners on the, the IPFS side of the house is uh, to ultimately get uh, IPFS nodes uh, to potentially, or some iteration of IPFS nodes to be able to perform these advertisements uh, explicitly on their own without uh, necessarily needing to run a provider instance independently. Uh, and so, uh, this is a work stream that is not presently underway, I would say, but it, it's in the design decision kind of process where we're talking about ways that we might go about this. Um, and then uh, another, I, I would say, like novel approach that you can take, so there's kind of a few layers potentially, uh, is through the EIPFS implementation uh, just by virtue of leveraging that specific uh, EIPFS version, you, you can uh, advertise through that method. So that is actually how uh, the folks at NFT Storage and Web3.Storage are uh, presently announcing their uh, IPFS additions to the network to the indexer. Did that answer your question? <laughs> Are you looking at anything in the FVM to help implement some of this? Because the, this sounds very similar to like subgraphs in mm. ETH. Um, so, and I'm not, I, I don't know like how, off the top of my head, I don't really have a good idea of how well it would scale to, you know, log SIDs um, in like FVM logs. But is that like something you're thinking about? I, I won't pontificate on that it's not like immediately in the zone of like discussion topics we're actually i would say pretty heavily iterating on like immediate problems with content routing however these types of ideas are really great uh and i think uh fem is very fresh uh join the content routing work group and, and come and uh like discuss these topics with us you know you know we'd love to have you ben hannah If hypothetically I were someone who was not fully bought into the IP&I approach, uh, I maybe were a group that was researching how to do the DHT better, um, would I still be someone who should show up at the content routing group? Yeah, yeah. Hey, you're, you're, the, you're the perfect person. Like This is exactly who we want to, to join this work group. I, I will say that, uh, that IP&I is a solution which ultimately gets us much closer to some state where potentially we can have a, like, you know, Masi said several times, smash Web2 performance, right? So 
we are making trade-offs in the process of attempting to do that. We recognize that we're making those trade-offs. We're doing it to get to an immediate state where we can get that performance in place and then disaggregate the problem of like, how do we decentralize now that we're like able to do the thing? Uh, how do we deal with like this very critical topic of like representing our values through uh, decentralized services and uh, also obviously privacy is a big function of that. Um, but we want that uh, contention to result in actual action. And uh, so you would find yourself in very good company. Uh, if I had a great algorithm. Well, I, which I don't. But that's okay. That's okay. I mean, like uh, the process of these discussions ultimately often is to design said algorithms by virtue of kind of the, the community discussion and uh, to lead to those actions. And so your, your voice would be very appreciated. Absolutely. I wanted to add two things to two other questions that was uh, mentioned. So the first one, uh, Torfin mentioned that we're looking for other people to run network indexers. Uh, I wanted to make it absolutely clear that uh, this is not an all or nothing protocol. You can absolutely run a network indexer that only indexes your stuff. Uh, that is perfectly welcome. On the provider side, in IPNI protocol, you always store the information that you only provide, uh, which is the slight distinction to make there. Uh, for me, uh, two words to highlight in that title is just content routing. And I wanted to connect it to the intro uh, slides, which is this concept of content routing. We have some idea of the boundaries, but it is still loosely defined. What was there that unite us is the easiest way by which you can discover information and um, make it discoverable. And that is a value that is independent of protocol. Right? And success for me would be a future where that is made true and the protocol or implementation becomes irrelevant to the end user. That's why this working group exists. So please don't let the three letters of IPNI scare you. This is not IPNI. IPNI is not necessarily the future. It's just a implementation of a routing system uh, and uh, hopefully many, many more. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Thanks, Masi. I was thinking more about what you said about the, like, if, if people can run indexers that don't have copies of everything, right, then as a client, you're going to need to know which indexer to talk to to find a particular piece of data, right? How is that any different from, like, conceptually from, like, location addressing? Where you have to know who to talk to in order to find the data that you're looking for? The, the short answer is, uh, I don't know. I mean, there, there is a lot of similarities for sure. Uh, I think the, the first thing to enable is to just make the content easier to discover. We haven't even touched this discoverer discovery problem, right? We have scratched the surface. There is there is a draft design by Will sitting at the back, uh, ambient discovery stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is something that we absolutely need to uh, solve. Uh, it, it is slightly different in the case of IPNI because because of the work and way it works. But uh, I, I totally see. Again, multiple discovery mechanisms through the DHT to then pass you on into nodes that then have the content. And the fundamental idea there is that uh, you have uh, you play into the heterogeneity of the nodes, where you have nodes that have more resources or willing to do more for whatever benefit, and the rest of it is just figuring out how it's going to work together. Right? Uh, that is different from the purest view of the DHD, which is everybody's flat, nobody's more important than anybody else, and you know that's fantastic for resilience, uh, but there's just more different use cases. And, and to me, it occurs, it occurs to me that there is, there is room for alternative solutions to then satisfy that uh, different use cases. Uh, the trick, of course, is to make it all work together uh, I think the double hashing stuff is a great intro into making sure that all these systems actually do work together because we do not want to break routing for, from DHT <laughs> to IPN as a result of making it more private. 
so to me, that is a really great exercise to make sure we've got the interfaces right. I know there are talks later on about how to, what the interfaces are going to look like. Uh, it's, it's the beginning. But I yeah. think, I think as there, there's, like, there's also like, with content addressable data, we have all these like kind of unique uh, possible outcomes where we can get outside of our heads a little bit. Like, there's definitely a huge parallel, and I wouldn't blame you for recognizing it with like location-based addressing, like typical networking, IP routing. But we also have like all these functionalities available to us that uh, aren't available in traditional IP-based routing. And so I think like what we continue to explore in the future is like where are the places where we can do, like displace those like traditional limitations of location-based networking and what are these like new paradigms that we can uncover uh, and discover. I think these are like kind of the really exciting topics that uh, we get to have in the content routing work group and uh, through the discussions will we'll surface. Uh, there's just feels like there's a lot of opportunities. I just, yeah, I, just, I wanted to be clear that I'm not criticizing for using, I actually like location addressing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so like, that's the, that's the thing that enables scalability is it's basically like sharding and stuff like that, right? Sure, so like, sure. Learning how to deal with it, I think is an important problem, so. I'm with you there. All right, thank you. So, uh, so my understanding I mean, I get why like IPNS makes sense for large sets of CIDs, uh, but also I think I think the DHT makes a lot of sense when it's a little small set of uh, CIDs. Let's say it's it's an IoT network or it's a private network, but also discovering the IPNS providers, uh, uh, IPNI providers, like could be done through DHT. So my understanding is we're, we're not dropping the DHT, but no. just adding something else, right? Yeah, okay. we, we want, like, uh, ultimately, for the benefits of, like, a, a distributed kind of network like we have, it, we want accessible content routing methods to, to exist. We want people to explore this concept of content routing, potentially even think of solutions that we're not, like, immediately having. But with the volume and scale of Filecoin, we're actually, uh, we're not at 1.3 trillion SIDs anymore. We're ingesting uh, 40, 30 to 40 billion a week right now. I'm like persistently looking at these numbers in between talks even. Uh, we, we actually are at like 1.4 trillion right now, probably creeping up on 1.5. Like the rate of ingestion that's happening right now is it's massive. The network's massive. And uh, we expect that that's only gonna like continue to take off. And so the kind of, solution, the strategy that we're taking here is let's get this like fundamental system in place which can handle this type of scale. Uh, we have to leverage like a semi-centralized solution to do that. Uh, but then we like approach like all these other methods should operate in parallel. And so, you know, solutions can come along that are completely potentially contradictory in their solution to this problem that plug right into the network, um, but we're offering a solution in, in place. And yeah, maybe even like leverage, you know, like both, you know, like, oh, said, yeah, like, yeah. like use the DHT to find the IP and AI, you know, uh, providers and then use the IP and AI providers to find CRDs, you know, in let's say like Filecoin or something like that. There's absolutely a world where you these know. systems are entirely complementary. Yeah. yeah, cool. Uh, I'll be haunting you in that work group. Join us. Yeah. Yeah. I think at the same time that we imagine, and, and there is this reality of many different content routing things, that there also are user desires where end product systems are going to move towards the latency um, in order to compete with Web2 and so forth. And so there is a pretty strong push that we'll get from applications um, for that, that, that resists these cascade like things and, and having, you know, the location service, uh, or, or the, I'm going to have my index of my own content where in, I think in the same way that we've seen with cassette currently, um, it, it, it leads to then decisions of, are we waiting for that? And those things will end up as lower tiers if nothing else. Um, so, so there is this pushback towards, you know, how much can you get? Um, where you push it left, I think, uh, was the metaphor that, that Masi used earlier. 
um, into the immediate uh, systems that, that users are querying. Uh, and, and so I think there, there's a couple things there. One is uh, if you're running instances of, uh, or an instance of IPNI, one of the things that we're, that, that IPNI uh, is doing for you is making car archives of the processed index and so forth, such that it becomes easier to share that and, and push it left to other instances. Uh, rather than just having your uh, your own content routed uh, thing, although you get that now very quickly within your domain, um, but it 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 lowers the barrier hopefully uh, for that becoming just part of the broader uh, network. Uh, and and so I guess I, I'm I'm still hoping that we don't end up with lots of location addressed subnetworks, um, <laughs> but rather can design systems that. Uh, allow for uh, the true content addressing where, where stuff ha is that, that is going to be public, where a user that wants it um, is close to them uh, and, and that you don't have to go back to all, uh, a growing and unbounded uh, number of potential providers. Thanks, Will. Uh, this is a really important point and this is something that we will uh, deliberate on continuously in this work group. That's what this work group exists for, is to have these types of discussions and to divine the pathways that we take. All right, well, thank you, everybody, for listening to me talk. <laughs>